later. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Loft Spot. I'm your host, Sebastian Cosme. And I'm your co-host, Taylor Spain. And we are sitting with the very legendary, in my book, Eddie Casillas from the band Voodoo Glow Skulls. What's up, man? How's it going, dudes? Uh, how's everyone out there doing? You guys good? I, I'm fantastic. Doing good, man. Doing good. <laughs> Just still in my living room. <laughs> I'm super excited to have you guys on. I remember listening to Voodoo Glow Skulls. Got, yeah, now, you guys have been around since, what, 1988? Exactly. Yep, 88. And it was you, and it was you and your brothers that originally started the band, correct? Yep, my uh, my younger brother and I, and our our old friend Jerry O'Neill uh, was the original drummer, and then our our older brother kind of joined it like a, a, a about a year after we started playing as a little like three piece band. He joined. Nice. I, and I finally caught wind. So I was gonna say I'm 38, right? So I finally caught wind of Voodoo Glow School sometime right after high school. Okay. And I remember the first time I heard El Kukui. Okay. Yeah. That, I, <laughs> that, that's always the case. I always hear about high school. It's always, it, that seems to be like that's the kind of, that, that's people's era for, for our band. You know, at, at least when they first heard about us and all that stuff. But yeah. So yeah. I heard El Kukui and I was like, this song is sick. And I remember just playing it, thinking I was super cool, listening to that song, walking around everywhere I went, man. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, for I mean, for the time, it, it had that sa- a certain sound. I mean, it had its own thing. For there being ska punk bands are like out already, it still had its own element. You know, it had its own kind of darkness and sound, and no one really sounds like that, I guess. I mean, especially then. So uh, no, yeah, I, I guess we kind of felt cool when when we recorded it. New was it was going to be a thing, if at all. Like even we were just glad to record it and write that song and put it out like with a real recording because. Uh, we knew it had its own thing, at least of anything. I mean, we never really thought a song like that could be like, oh, that might stand the test of time because it's so, you know, we weren't thinking that way. We're like a backyard party Scott punk band, you know, sort of from the semi hood kind of. So we always had kind of hood roots a little bit, you know, so we never thought like, yeah. oh, it'll go, it'll reach like across uh, like, like to other countries even or, or that kind of stuff. But, um, yeah, man, we were still we we kind of still knew. I think it was different enough, but we just didn't know how far how 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 far it would reach. You know. Now, take me back to when the band first started. Okay, there couldn't have been that many ska. Now, you guys are from Riverside, California, so Southern California, where ska super big. But in the late '80s, was ska really a thing back then, or was it something new? Well, it was uh, it was new being done the way we were doing it and about to do more of and. There was only a few bands that were doing it um, in the in the late '80s. There had already been like Fishbone, you know. I mean, who's in Southern California? That was my, I guess, I'm speaking for myself, of course, and 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 some of the guys in my band, especially like like the OG four guys in the band that really started the sound. Um, mm-hmm. We were big in in the Fishbone, especially uh, I guess the rhythm section, like the drummer and I and the bass, you know. The, George, you know, like my younger brother, we were big in, in the fishbone. Like that was our shit. I mean, them and the Red Hot Chili Peppers and Jane's Addiction, when you're, you know, that that close to Los Angeles and it's it's 1985, 86, 87, that was like the trifecta. And then they, and then you had yeah, all right time going on and everything else too. But um, they were the bands that were getting signed and getting big, like, you know, like in L.A. And uh, – but then there was the outside stuff, like the Guns N' Roses going on, and then all the punk rock stuff, like I said, all the 80s punk stuff. But uh, but going back to Fishbone and Ska, um, th- them and, like, the Untouchables, I think, were, like, some of the only bands. And then and then um, there was No Doubt, who was already a thing. Mm. And and definitely a Ska band at that time. Like a, right. More, more like, Ru- like, you know, like Rude Boy dress up Ska band. Um at least for that for that period, you know, I guess like when they were like in high school age, you know, and then uh, and then there was the Boss Tones and Operation Ivy. Yeah, that, man, that was kind of it, you know. I mean, we kind of crossed paths with with like Skanking Pickle and those bands, like like a little later when we were already all all kind of doing horn ska punk kind of melded together, you know. But we kind of de- didn't um uh. We were kind of on our own little thing as it was, man. We kind of liked funk at first, like punk funk, you know, and we weren't good at doing it, but we were trying to, <laughs> like in 1985, you know, we were trying to be like, kind of like the Chili Peppers when we were first playing. And, and this is kind of pre, 
kind of pre-Voodoo Glow Skulls and then right into the starting of our band. Because we kind of played with the with the same musicians anyways. Like our a little, you know, like like a, a little group group of friends kind of learned at the same time. So we kind of, that was our first stuff that we learned. It was like the heavy metal stuff, the early punk rock stuff. And then, like I said, when we started to get old, kind of old enough to know about the Hollywood scene, that was only about an hour away. So we were we were influenced by every bit of like like the Hollywood like like the LA scene was like first it was like you know p- like punk rock in the you know like the late in like the late seventies early eighties uh-huh. it was like the glam rock kind of kind of hair bands yeah yeah I was fifteen and sixteen so how was I not going to learn about Motley Crue and then like, right 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 that was like the punk rock for a minute sort of I hate to say it but when punk rock kind of got kind of dissipated and kind of faded out. Uh-huh. The new punk rock for a minute was the dudes doing heroin and, and and looking like chicks and you know getting all the girls. That was kind of punk rock. <laughs> you know, I hate to say it, but it's at least for me. So I kind of like gravitated towards all all the scenes. And then at the same time, you had like the Chili Peppers, like I said, and uh, Fishbone doing ska with like when 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 Fishbone was kind of doing their more of a ska sound for sure at that time. Like they were kind of really more of a ska. I think what's cool about Voodoo Glow Skulls, listening to your music, see, I never personally really put you in the ska genre. I'll, you have horns, but yeah. to me, uh, Voodoo Glow Skulls always have like a harder edge, like a more punk edge, because you're a lot of ska mixed with like kind of the pop punk, and yeah. you guys were like punk punk, uh, doing it with the, with, with, with the, with the trumpets and stuff. And I thought that for being ska, I would say, Maybe it's because you're one of the originators of the sound. Yeah. Uh, d- a definitely a different style. I mean, everyone who's in a ska band has to look up to your band as an influence, as one of the influences. If they don't, they need to. Well, that's that's nice of you to say, and that's cool that some people might think that. And uh, I mean, we we kind of got, and I, I don't want to go there because it's kind of being like, neg- like I hate to say bad shit, like an interview about any, anything, but right. to be fair – what kind of kind of molded our band? We were always kind of a punk, like I said, a punk funk thrashy band. That like we liked Anthrax and Slayer and and Iron Maiden was a big. That's a that's my biggest influence. But so I like came from that first kind of as a like a like a like a pre adolescent kid, and then I got into punk and then the ska stuff. So the roots are kind of still based in hard rock and heavy metal because that's kind of what came first. It's like after, right for me for the for be, me I'm I'm. I'm um, um, about to be 50 years old. I'm um, 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 49. And um, that's my age group. That's what I grew up on. So it's yeah. even like certain things that you just heard when you were a kid. So we were always going to be a out of the box band playing. We were always going to mold, like mix our influences for sure, I think. Because we like too much of everything. And, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. And you, and you can tell you do in, in the music that you write. And and your music that you write today still sounds similar. It's like you haven't really. It's like your sound still sounds like Voodoo Glow Skulls, which is so important for bands. I think to stick with the music that they started with and continue to to write similar similar songs. Yeah, yeah, man, I appreciate that. Yeah, we've uh, you know, we probably like steered off to the right, right or left. I mean, we this is our our tenth album that's about to come out. So we've uh, wow, congratulations, awesome. Oh, thanks, man. We've like you know kind of veered off a little bit and sort of change our sound slightly but not to where it's like that's not voodoo i mean now with all the lineup changes and i mean it's really the like the, the, the principal music and like lyric writers left but we don't have the original singer which is kind of crazy to even for people with a band like us that's been around for so long that we were more of a leg i mean i mean we're, i mean we have a i mean we're like a legacy band man it's not like like a two album band it's like a family band too you know so to come out and try to hold your head up high with a new with a new album and show, like even try to convincing fans that have listened to the band for so long. Hey man, here's a bunch here's a bunch of new music and and the singers the original singers not there. I mean, that's a, yeah, that's a crazy sell. But, but <clears throat> to be fair, man, we've always done this. I've always done this. It's always kind of come from the guitars and the bass to begin with. Not to. You know that's just where it started as far as the music goes. So I'm 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 hoping that when people hear it, it's pretty evident, like that. Oh, it's gonna be voodoo still. Like the sound is there, and the sound might have changed for sure. We changed along, I mean, with the vocals a little bit. We kind of like, we kind of welcome. I mean, we kind of welcome the sound change. It's been, you know, this is the. I mean, the tenth uh, album. I mean, I think 
I think we did a decent job of making it sound like voodoo for sure, but like using the best elements of whatever from ha- I mean has to bring, you know, because it's just a different era, a different time um, with what 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 went down in the world. It's kind of a crazy record to begin with, just what what was going on the last four or five years, and then you know from the Trump era to the pandemic era to mm-hmm. a new, to a new singer in the middle of it without planning on doing that, like it was going to be sink or swim. We were going to stop like for about, for about three weeks to a month. We were like, okay, we're done. We're going to be done. You know, we're just going to, we've done, I mean, we've done, I mean, nine, I mean, we've, I mean, not to be weird about it, but we've been all over the world, man. We've kind of done. <laughs> dude, that is not weird. You know yeah. what? You should be proud of that shit. Dude. But, like, but I, I have to make it sound like, Oh, I've been there, done that because I'm not, yeah, I've never been lost on it. Like, I just put out we were we were about to put out like the most the most DIY record we've done since the since the first one. That we're back on our on the OG label, kind of doing things that are ourselves in a lot of ways with just a couple of friend kind of slash in, you know like in, you know like I guess in, in like the intern type friends that are just kind of helping us out and with and and with a small indie label, we're just kind of back back to square one. Yeah, I mean, your newest, all- your newest song you came out with is "Living the Apocalypse," right? Yeah, it's been about it's been it's been a little bit over two weeks since it's been out. <laughs> so pretty, pretty early. I think I'm going to share it. Are you cool with that? Yeah, let's check it out. I know, I know you say you don't do a lot of podcasts or you haven't done very many, but check this out. <laughs> 